Hello and welcome to Eurogamer. Uh, my name is Christian Donlan and today we're very lucky to be talking with Charles Martinet who is the voice of Mario and Luigi and so many other great uh, video game characters. So uh, Charles, it's lovely to have you here. Hello, Christian. I will never touch. Can you do you you could just switch into that voice at will? It mm. does it just happen randomly when you're when you're. I love Luigi so much. He's such a great character. I'm I'm so completely in love with Luigi's Mansion too. I I've been playing it and I'm having such a good time. I actually live in a really old house and when I I put down my my 3ds. Excel and I, you know, I've been playing uh, Luigi's Mansion for a little bit, and I and I start hearing the ghost noises. I'm like, oh my goodness, my my house is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not hard. It's not hard for you to kind of get in character. You're, the surroundings are, are right there, sort of floating. You know, it's it, it's so fun. I I have such a great time doing the characters. Luigi is such a great character. It, it's always uh, with me, and and now it's. <laughs> so, but before we talk about Luigi's Mansion, just quickly, what, what is it like having portrayed Mario for you know so many years now? What is it like to portray these characters who are such such a huge part of pop culture, but also such a huge part of the lives of hundreds of thousands of children around the world? That must be something else. You know, I, I have to tell you, Christian, it's, it's an absolute tremendous honor and a joy, and I love every minute of it. I'm grateful for my life so much because there's nothing, I mean, everything, every aspect about recording the, the games, working with the wonderful, wonderful people I work with at Nintendo, uh, getting to say hello to Mr. Miyamoto once in a while and all the other great creative minds there, and playing characters that I absolutely love and have such wonderful uh, dimensions to them humanity to them at the same time as being cartoon characters and then you know being able to talk to someone like you about it who, who loves the games and uh, and meeting fans uh, at, at shows or at shopping malls or, or you know, stores uh, it's just every minute of uh, Mario and Luigi is it, it, just absolutely filled with joy for me do you have any idea why people love them so much? Why these characters, these sort of funny plumbers and the adventures they get into, why they are so beloved? They're like, uh, they're on the same level as Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're just completely, uh, everyone adores them. You know, I think it's a, it's a tribute to Mr. Miyamoto and all the creative teams in Japan and America and England and all around the world who, uh, I mean, I've never met anyone at Nintendo in any office in the world who doesn't love the games. And it's that incredible passion for games and joy and love for the game that, that creates the incredible integrity uh, uh, today as, as well as yesterday. I mean, 30 years ago, there was Luigi for the first time. <laughs> and the, the integrity of that character still, 30 years later, is still there, still being opened out and fleshed out. And, and we're seeing more and more depth and dimension. But it's always true to form. So I think it's the passion and the love for the game that everybody at Nintendo feels. And also the, the absolute, you know, when you love games, you want to make great games and you want to sell great games. And, and uh, that passion and, and creativity is, is in every single member uh, of Nintendo. So, so can you tell me a little bit about getting into the process of getting into character to play Luigi? Is it is it a very different process from getting into character to play Mario? Do you see them... Do you have very clear, distinct pictures of the, the brothers in your mind? And you know which you, you, the differences between them? Yes, I do. And it's funny because you, you asked that because I, I, I really realized that I think about Luigi. I'm the younger brother. Uh, and uh, my, my older brother, I'm actually taller than he is. I run faster and I jump higher. I had to because he was my older brother. And so... <laughs> And he was a little bit more bold and able to do things that I was a little like, oh, where are you going? <laughs> you know, so I, I draw a lot of parallels between the, between those brothers and uh, and me with my brother. Uh, I'm a little more tentative, but I, I you know, I, I so admire Luigi because Luigi may be uh, scared, you know, you, you watch him in Luigi's Mansion uh, too, and he's like scared, you know, but he's always courageous enough to go ahead and do it anyway, and I think I admire that tremendously. I, I, the, the character is, is, you know, it's, the characters are so real to me and so fun to me that they're always right there, you know? 
And and when you've played the characters for so many years as I have, uh, it's it, it's it's right there. I mean, it's right there for me in the morning when I wake up. You know, <laughs> you know, it's 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 just it's it's alive. <laughs> I was going to ask you. It's funny that you say that. You know, you you admire Luigi's bravery because I was wondering if if Luigi's Mansion Two was about the adventures of Charles Martinet rather than Luigi, mm-hmm. would you would you be heading into the first mansion? Would you be would you would you have what it takes to go through the first door? Shaking, I would be shaking. If I saw a mouse with a key, I would jump and be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> So, with with the first Luigi's Mansion, this was almost the first time that players we'd we'd played as Luigi before, and we'd seen him in games, and we'd sort of raced carts with him. But it was the first time we got to know him a little bit more. And tell me about working out that characterization for him, sort of the the fact that he hums along with the music, and the fact that you know he's always calling out for his brother and stuff. Talk to me about the process of finding the character in that game. Well, you know, I, I, I have the great fortune uh, of working with terrific producers and, and, and produ- great directors. So I get to see some of these animations and then put the, the voice to them, which gives me the added benefit of seeing the sort of uh, uh, the idiosyncrasies and the, and the, 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 the minute uh, uh, aspects of the, of the character. So, and I, I, I think that Luigi in order to counteract his fear, it's just naturally that he hums. And I, that's actually something that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let you know, let yourself know that you're there, that everything's okay. It, it, it's just, uh, oh. he's such a great, great character. I, I love mm. Luigi. So much fun. And I and I love that he's stepping into the spotlight and, and having his own uh, game. You know, this is the year of Luigi. And I know that Mr. Mm-hmm. Miyamoto and the creative teams always when they say something like that that means there's going to be a lot of fun coming up you know <laughs> do you think with 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 luigi's mansion they feel like more character pieces than the mario games is there sort of more of a is it more of a, a focus on you as an actor to deliver that performance because you are mario is in the center of his games but luigi you're up very close with him and you're there watching as he goes through each door it feels like a much more uh, sort of uh, a close-up kind of performance is required. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's intimate, isn't it? You get to see Luigi. You get to really feel his uh, trepidation and hesitancy, and then and then his joy and happiness and triumph. It, it is really interesting, and I, I'm 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 so fascinated by Luigi's Mansion too because I, I love Luigi's Mansion one. It's also it's a very intricate game. You have to spend a lot of time exploring and discovering and finding out. You know what. what where those, where those, you know, the strobo, the when, when you see the little, uh, the, a golden bone. What, what does that mean? You know, it's, it's like everything is, is uh, <laughs> it's very exciting. And I, I found out today that finding treasure is very important. <laughs> Can I ask about the things that in the game that aren't strictly lines, the kind of the kind of the grunts and the kind of the yips that you, Luigi makes as he wanders around? Are, do you sort of how to act those moments out? Are you sort of are you are you, are you a method actor at points like this? Are you sort of lugging tables and chairs around and throwing yourself against walls and stuff? Absolutely, I've I've always done that. I, I've never once been able to sit down for a session. I'm always standing, and if I'm pulling a, a rope, I completely pantomime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 that's the way I do it. I, 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 I admire someone that doesn't get physical, but I, for me, it's like that's, it's like the energy comes out of the earth through the, you know, through the body, and, and you, that's how you get the, the, the truth behind the whatever uh, thing you're doing. So, you know, from the happiness that comes, you know, you know, oh, oh all that to every, every, in every aspect, up to all. Oh, <laughs> I could listen to you do that all day. I think. Um, can I, one of one of the fa- my, my favorite stories about the animation industry I ever heard was that Dawes Butler, who was the guy, who, the first guy to play Fred Flintstone, he came up with Yabba Dabba Doo while in the recording booth. That was kind of a, an ad lib he came up with at the end of a take. And I wondered, is there is there a certain degree of back and forth with as you are, as you take ownership of these characters as an actor? Is there a certain degree of back and forth with the script? Can you, have you do you ad lib things and throw things yeah, in? Yeah, no, it's it's great because uh, 
we, we get to see uh, animations happen. Sometimes I meet the creators of the game, and you know they talk with with their passion about the wonder of the game and the characters. And so we, I watch animation. We have a script, and then we uh, after we go through the script, and we try various uh, things with each one, and, and sometimes uh, you know uh, to the animation. Then we improvise and play around, and, and you know horse around and. Uh, it's out of things like that that uh, oh, oh, oh hey man oh yeah oh yeah you know just come out and, and that's uh, it's it's such a great creative process yeah, I never know who creates what because the uh, producers and directors that I work with are so fantastic and the creators are so uh, fantastic and everybody has lots of ideas flying around so I just uh, jump in the pool and have fun <laughs> do you see these games at the point where Nintendo's games are so polished and we always we only really see them at the end it, um, you know the players only get them when they're finished and they're complete and they're full of yeah. secrets and stuff you, do you get to see them throughout the whole process? You get to see them while they're being put together. Well, I do a little bit. Yes, I, I'm not there for uh, much of the, the, the uh, of the process, but I do. When I record, I get to see games in various stages of, of development. And I, I have to tell you, it's it's incredible how much goes into creating a video game. The the amount of, of hours and weeks and months and years, and, and, you know, because when you turn the character in a role of a you know, a role-playing game. You, you've got to turn, and you've got to see exactly what the the uh, designers, the creative people, the graphics people, all want you to see. That enhances that piece of the adventure. You know. So it, now that we started with three dimensions and with the Mario 64 so many years ago in 1996, it it, it exponentially means that the designers have to have to create an entire world that doesn't just scroll by or isn't part of a single screen, you know, that you explore, but, but everywhere you look, every room you enter, every every ghost you see, where it goes through the wall, how it goes through the wall, every single aspect has to be done. And I can tell you that if it were a film, it, it would be frame by frame by frame all through the movie, you know, except that it's three dimensions and anywhere you turn is an improvised next move. So the, the amount of work is, is tremendous. And again, the, the love for uh, and passion for the game right. means that people also have a passion for details so that when you do play the game, it's just totally fun. So do you have, do you, you said you, you'd be lucky enough to talk to Mr. Miyamoto and have you spoken to Mr. Uh, Mr. Miyamoto and Mr. Koizumi maybe about, about their kind of ideas for the characters and stuff? Do, do, because these are the people who kind of create these characters within the game. Have there been a bit of back and forth between you guys talking about your you understanding? Know, uh, uh, they are the masters of creativity and I'm the guy that puts the frosting on the cake. So I, don't, I don't dare tell the bakers. <laughs> <laughs> how to put it all together but I, I'm fascinated because they're such nice people you know I, I was just I remember the first time I met Mr. Miyamoto and it, it, it's it was incredible I, 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 there he was and just the nicest guy we chatted we talked you know and I don't speak Japanese he doesn't speak a tremendous amount of English but I just oh, yeah. it, he's just the most kind, considerate, wonderful, humble man. I just It just amazes me because somebody who created that much fun for so many millions of people, a massive industry, and he's just uh, just a wonderful, creative man that, that is, is happy and uh, is living his dream. And I guess for me, what, what the inspiration of that to me is that I, I'm a huge believer for everyone to, to do what you love in life and to, to uh, oh. It's, you know, find what your dream is, find what your passion is, uh, what your passions are, and explore them and develop mm -hmm. them, and do what you love to do, because life, one thing I can say, goes so fast, you should be having as much fun as you possibly can. Wow, and that's Mario telling people, that was him telling yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you gotta, you got to listen to that guy. Um, can I... Uh, one thing I'm interested with voice actors uh, is do you have any kind of rituals? I, I met a voice actor once who had to eat a certain thing before they recorded, or but are there any kind of rituals you get into to kind of look after your voice or the, just to kind of get ready to do a recording session? 
Well, you know, I, I do drink every morning. The first thing I have is lemon uh, juice in water. <laughs> but that's not so much for the voice as much as it is just for the body. And that's my routine. I have the most wonderful routine that we do when I, I fly up to uh, Seattle to record a game with the great folks at Nintendo there. Uh, I, we often order sushi and uh, I have an incredibly fantastic sushi lunch and then start recording afterwards. And it's I'm recording as the happiest guy in the world because I love sushi. <laughs> <laughs> and you say you play the games quite a bit, so you're playing Luigi's Mansion 2 at the moment, is that right? Yes, I don't play them well, but I play them. You know, I, I have such a great time. I mean, it, it, Luigi Mansion 2 is it, challenging for me because it's not, it's not as... Uh, it's much it's so intricate it's so i mean you have to look everywhere you have to get the strobe bulb and then you know you see the 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 so many like well, how do i get through how do i get past these people how do i get this how do i get the ghost and it's like you're catching a ghost it's like you gotta you gotta really get yourself together <laughs> Um, this is my last question. It's just because I'm a little bit of an I'm a bit of an animation nerd myself, and I just wondered like uh, th- some of the great voice artists of history. Are there any that particularly you, that you think were particularly brilliant, or you'd particularly like to have met or to have worked with, or anything like that? Well, you know, Mel Blanc. Of yes. Course. Yes. You know, is such an incredible, uh, the first master of of our craft and. I, I admire so many people, you know, I, I, I like, I, 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 funnily enough, the, the television I watch is, is a family guy, American dad, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, you know, because I, I'm fascinated not only by the, the voice quality and aspect, but the sense of humor uh, uh, of different characters and characterizations, and so I, 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 I love it, and I... I love too because I think any voiceover actor will do just what I say. It's like, my goodness, do what you love in life. Pursue it. You may want to be a voice actor, but you may you don't have the what it takes to be the actual voice actor and I think although I don't really believe that, I think everybody has talent, you know. But by pursuing your your, your path and doing what you love in life, you may not end up doing voiceovers, but you might work with like Nintendo or some company that, that, that has voiceover actors, you might become a producer or a director or a casting agent, and then thereby doing something that you absolutely love, even though it might not be exactly the way you see it, because it, life is never the way we you know, think it's going to be, but it can always be even better than we uh, can dream. Oh, hello? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Ow. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. I did it. Ah. Oh, oh.